Assalamu alaikum. Try that again. Assalamu alaikum. I like the way that sounds. Let me say it again. Assalamu alaikum. I look forward to hearing that one day in the White House. And then paint it black. <laughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafu rasaleen. Sayyidina wa habibina Muhammad. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the most merciful, we bear witness that nothing should be worshipped except Allah. And we bear witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam is indeed the messenger of Allah and the seal of all prophets. We bear witness that whom Allah chooses to guide out of his infinite mercy and wisdom, no one can misguide them. And whom Allah allows to go astray, no one will ever be able to guide them to the path of truth, as we have come to know with the path of Islam, submission to the will of Almighty God, Allah. Brothers and sisters, before I go into the topic itself of the da'wah, I want to focus a little bit on the head title bearing the banner of submission. And I am so happy to see so many young brothers and sisters here and parents that are sitting here because I didn't think too many of you would be up this early in the morning. Honestly, we were here early and I said, brother, I don't think you brothers chose the best time. Because I know when the young brothers and sisters come to cities like Philadelphia and New York, they walk up and down the street all night long on the elevators, up and down. The young brothers who are single, they want to get married, they're looking for the sisters. The sisters who are single, who are trying to convince their dads they should be engaged, up, I said, brother, we should have put it at 12 o'clock. So your presence here, your presence here, is a sign that you are indeed searching for guidance, you are searching for meaning, and you have a deep inner desire to be good Muslims. Because honestly, most young people your age on a Saturday morning are sleeping or watching cartoons or playing with one of the games. And we don't have any form of entertainment here necessarily. We don't have any dancing and music. This is in the morning on a Saturday. And so I want each and every one of you to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing you to be privileged and have the desire that he has blessed you with to want to do what you can to become a good Muslim. And I want you to know as young brothers and sisters that your parents like all parents, and you will become also in the future, our parents want us to be perfect. Our parents want us to be better than they were. And sometimes in our parents' desire to perfect the child, our parents fail to realize that we'll never be the perfect child they desire us to be. However, as young people, I want you to know, when your mothers and fathers and uncles and aunts and elders in the community are yelling and screaming at you from the top of their lungs about obeying Allah and being a Muslim, they are doing this with a sincere desire to see you rise to a level of consciousness whereupon you can exemplify the true essence of what a Muslim means and what it represents. However... I want to talk about submission, submission, because when we learn Islam, one of the first things we learn is that the word Islam means to submit. We know that the root word of Islam, Aslama, from the original verb, Salima, means to be at peace, to be secure, and Aslama means to submit, to surrender. So Islam is often in, interpreted, or it is defined, I should say, as submission to the will of Allah. I want to talk about submission, because I just want to let you know I'm a little older than most of you here, in terms of the youth. I can say that now. I want you to know 
from just an older brother that this process of submission is a lifetime struggle. You'll never get it in one week, in one day. I don't care how much Quran you read. I don't care how many hadith you read. I don't care how many scholars you meet. You will struggle against your lower desires. You will struggle against the voice of Satan every day of your life. And the battle is never over until death overtakes you. Allah says in the Holy Quran, وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Allah says, do not die, except that you are a what? A Muslim. Do not die. And death is what? It is the end of life as we know it today. Death is the end of life as we know it. But it is the beginning of a new life. So we learn from that as Muslims that the most important aspect of our lives, it is not the beginning, it is the end. When it's all said and done, no matter how you start out this journey, the question is, on your deathbed, how you leave this world. The Prophet ﷺ said some people, they go to bed as believers, but they wake up as disbelievers. Some people go to bed as disbelievers, and they wake up as believers. But this word submission is very, very important to understand. First question we should have is submission to whom and to what? What is it for us as Muslims? What is the objective that we seek to establish in submitting to Allah? What's the objective? Because we know we must submit to Allah only. I want you to hear me very clearly. We must remember as Muslims, we submit and we surrender to nothing and no one. Not the government, not the police, not the FBI, not the CIA. We submit and we surrender Allah alone. Nothing else. Nothing else. And I'm not telling you this to make you emotional. I'm telling you because there are people who want to conquer your soul. And the way you conquer the soul of a man is you put fear in him and you make him surrender. And he becomes your slave. He becomes your slave. And there are people who want you and me to be their slaves. And we will never bow down to anyone except Allah. No one else. Submission. To surrender. To whom? To Allah. To what? To the call of his prophet. And what is the call of all of the prophets? It is that we worship nothing, nothing except Allah and Allah alone. And there's a price for that. There are people who have given their lives so that you and I could have the privilege to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad ar Rasulullah. There is a price on this shahada. It is not for free. There are people from the beginning of time who have died for this truth that we say we want to be recipients of. We need to know today there's a price that has to be paid if you want to walk with Allah. And it's not going to be easy and you don't have time to waste believing that you're young and that you can involve yourself in sport and play because when the enemies of truth drop the bombs on the world of Islam, the number one targets and the number one people that suffer the most, it is the children who suffer. It is the old. It is the women. It, they become widows. And they poison the waters and the air and the children are born with cancers and other diseases. So I don't want you to think today, we're young Muslims, we can cool out, we got time, we don't have to submit to Allah yet. You should submit as soon as possible and report for duty. And find yourself a commanding officer who can give you the proper guidance and the best example to his or her ability so that you can get right with Allah. For the pleasure of Allah. Don't become a good Muslim for no one else. When you submit, you're submitting not to your mothers, not to your fathers, not to the imams, not to institutions. When you submit, you want to submit yourself to the creator of this world. Because you ain't going to go to heaven for trying to be a good Muslim for your father. You know what I mean, brother. Your father said it's fake salat. Get up, Ahmed. Salat. You go in the bathroom, what do you do? Make wudu. Allahu Akbar. You don't even have wudu. You're not even praying. You are wasting your time. You are involved in sport and play. How you doing, sister? Assalamu alaikum. Oh, sister, you look so nice in that hijab. Allahu Akbar, mashallah. 
and then when you leave the conference, what do you do? Fold it up and put it in the bag. What you wearing it for? Who are you trying to impress? Who are you trying to impress? What you praying for? Why are you acting like you fasting? Why do you want to give charity, huh? Why do you want to give charity? The brother made an excellent point. On the day of judgment, the Prophet said three people go to hell first. He didn't say they was a Christian. He didn't say they was a Jew. He didn't say they was a Hindu. He didn't say they was a Sikh. He said three people. Allah will ask the person with knowledge. Why you had the knowledge of the Quran and you taught it to the people? He says, Allah, I did it for you. Allah says, Kedhebs, you're lying. You're a liar. You did what you did because you wanted the people to say you was a scholar. Half is of Quran. It was already said. The other person gives charity, zakat. Allah say, why are you giving my cause? For your pleasure. Allah says, you're a liar. You wanted the people to say you were generous. It has been said. Another person comes along, died in the way of Allah, the shaheed. Allah wants to know, why did you give your life in my cause? He says, Allah, I did it for you. Allah says, Kadeth, you did it because you wanted the people to say that you were a brave man or a brave woman. I'm telling you today, I wouldn't care about anybody in America thinking I'm a good Muslim or a bad Muslim. I'm not going to be a Muslim for America. I don't care if nobody else takes Shahada. That's their business. Because our duty is to give the call. If they hear it and accept it, it is in their interest. If they don't, it's on them. Leave them alone. The Prophet was told by Allah in the Quran, Verily unto you, Muhammad, is only to deliver the message. I don't want to be a good Muslim for my co-workers. Act like I'm making salat. So my co-workers can go, Oh, Abdul Malik is really a pious man. Do you notice? That guy is always praying. He's always reading his Quran. He's so humble. And you know you're just a hypocrite. Don't be like that. Be yourself. And don't let nobody judge you as a young person. Don't let nobody's perception of you become your perception of yourself. Because everybody struggles on a different level. And don't let nobody judge you. The sister who don't have on hijab today, if you love her, pray for her. But don't condemn her. The brother who has his pants down and his hat backwards, who comes up to this conference, he comes from Pakistan by origin, but he's saying to his other young brothers, What's up, dog? What's up, my nigga? Yo, son, where we going? Pray for him. He's confused. He's confused. But what do we want to submit to? Allah. There are two types. Of submission. And I'm going to move quick. My brother from South Africa was excellent. He knows how to save time, but his words were very powerful. May Allah bless him and give him sincerity. Two types of form of submission. One, there are those who submit willingly. They hear truth and they can accept it. It's like your mom and dad. You ever hear your mom and dad argue? You know your daddy is wrong, but he won't admit to it. And he says, listen, woman, I'm the man in here. Did you hear what I said? Don't make me angry. Where's your respect for me? You know, the angels curse rebellious men as though they don't, re they, well, we say they, re they curse rebellious women. As though the angels don't curse rebellious men. Anybody can be cursed. You listen to me. You heard what I said. I'm watching the movie right now. I know you want to make a lot, but after my movie, I'm the man here. And you know your father's wrong. And your, and your mother says, honey, astaghfirullah. You telling me you want to watch the movie over Salat? The kids are waiting for prayer? You tell us we have to pray on time and now you don't want to pray? Let's go. No! I'm the man. That's arrogance. And we use the identity of a man to suppress and oppress women and oppress truth when women speak truth to us or someone speaks the truth whom we don't like. You know, some of us, we can't submit to the truth if the person telling us don't look like us. Oh, yeah. i tell you like it is. I go some places and teach and you can look in the people's face. They say, who that nigga think he is talking to me like that? There was a time we'd have lynched him, but I'm not a worrying about. I'm not worrying about the lynching. I'm going to tell them. Some people look at you. Look at these Muslims here. 
What the hell are they doing in Philadelphia now? It's been Latin on its way here? Homeland Security, do they got this thing under control? I've seen a lot of them come through lately. And they're women covering their heads like that. What's wrong with them? Don't they realize they're free? This is America. Well, if it's America and they're free, then they are expressing their freedom. But they can't accept that. Because they submit to something else. You want to wear your beard, brother? Grow it down to your neighbor if it makes you happy. It's your business. You want to wear a turban? It's your business. You want to wear the thongs that are made in China and think you look like the prophet? It's your business. You want to imitate others and surrender to something other than truth? It's your business. But there are two types of surrendering. There are those who they hear the call and they say, I'm wrong. And I submit. They say, Allah, I'm wrong. I submit. I can accept truth coming from anybody. Some of you right now, you can't even correct your fathers and mothers because they don't listen to you. Because you're a child. That's what we say. You're a kid. You don't talk to us like that. You're a kid. What would you have said to Jesus? He was a child too, speaking from the cradle. What would we have said to Usama, who the prophet, peace be upon him, put him in charge to lead the Muslim army at the age of 15? What do you say to him? When the prophet died and they wanted to remove Osama, the question was asked, why don't we put somebody else in charge? And what did Abu Bakr Siddiq say? You want me to remove someone whom the prophet himself appointed? No! So don't get into this idea that you're young and you have time to play. There is no time to play. It's time for business. We've got to handle our business because the future is yours. If you destroy it with sport and play, you will regret it in the end. Because time is valuable. Two forms of surrendering. One, you come willingly. You hear the word of truth and you accept it. Then there's another kind of surrender. Submission, unwillingly. A product of force. It's like when the FBI comes to your house. Mohammed, yes. Open the door. One second, please. My wife wanted to put a hijab. One second. Open the door. Okay, okay. Open the door. Got the gun on you. You, you know, you don't want to let him in. Let him in. You're shaking. They're entertained by seeing Muslims shake now. Because they say we talk about Allah so much. You say you believe in Allah so much. Prove it. You believe in Allah? Prove it. I'm going to call your house. Scared to pick up the phone, aren't you? Who are you scared of? Who's your master? It's natural to have some fear. But it's a crime to be a coward. Who you want to submit to? Brothers and sisters, I leave you with this. The best thing to do in life is to recognize all of your imperfections and come to Allah as a sinner and beg Him for His forgiveness and His guidance. But never try to be a good Muslim for other people's judgment. I don't care who don't think that Brother Abdul Malik is not a good Muslim. Brother Abdul Malik, I don't know, okay, he's okay, but, you know, he's not a scholar, brother. His pants are long, his beard, you know, he looked like the kuffar. May Allah bless you, brother. Brother Abdul Malik wears a suit and tie, you know, this is the clothes of the kuffar. May Allah bless you, brother. May he bless you. Because I love you anyway, because you're my brother. And I can see when we're ignorant, and it comes to the youth. And as the brother said, I want to re-emphasize as Muslim youth, who you are the future leaders of the world of Islam, you are an intricate part of the success of the Ummah of Islam in this part of the world. I'm telling you right now, if you turn to Allah and trust Allah, He will do for you what He did for Moses. He'll do for you what He did for Muhammad. He'll do for you what He did for Jesus. He'll do for you what He did for Abraham because He is the same Allah then and He's the same Allah today. And I'm telling you right now, there's no better time to walk with Allah than when you're a young person because you don't have all the sins in your life. We need some young Muslims in America to stay up at night and read Quran and cry and beg Allah to save this ummah. Because many of us who are older, we are so sinful and we are so imperfect. We need some young, strong brothers and sisters who believe in Allah, who want to be faithful to the cause. I'm not asking you to be perfect. I'm asking you to try. I'm not asking you to try once. I'm asking you to try until death overtakes you. That's what I want to see. Your hat is backwards. Alhamdulillah. 
Your pants are falling down, I'll buy you a belt. I'll help you. But brothers and sisters, I want you to know, be kind to yourself. All of you, be kind to yourself. Because if you're not kind to yourself, you can't be kind to nobody else. And with all due respect to what's going on in the world today, don't be preoccupied with White House politics. And don't be fooled by those little id dinners where they bring a few little Muslim kids to the little government houses and the Muslim brothers get the little Kodak moments with the president and the chief of the Pentagon and the little flag waving and the president and them will read, Islam means peace. And we get excited. Oh, oh, wait, but you heard the president? He said Islam means peace. He has the Holy Quran. Don't be stupid. Bring you to the White House and give you a Ramadan meal and then drop bombs on your brothers and sisters. What's wrong with you? I'm finished because I'll tell some of the elders in the future. Shame on some of them. Walking around like a bunch of cowards. Hiding. Bending over. Acting like they're slaves of some other institution. Worship Allah. Everybody must die. Death is written for everybody. Don't be afraid of death. You are born to die. And all of us are going to die. And I'm not telling you to do nothing crazy. I'm not talking about violence or terrorism, nothing stupid like that. But don't be afraid of anyone. Fear, glorify, believe, and trust in who? Allah. The best flag I have seen in America, after 9-11, is right back there, the hijab. Brothers took their kufi off. Brothers shaved their beards. Their thoughts went in their pants. Whoever was Mike became Mo. I call you, salam alaikum. Brother, don't say that on the phone. Don't say that on the phone. Are you guilty? Are you guilty? Boy, I wish I had more time. I can tell you today, brothers and sisters, the real terrorists, the real terrorists are the people who profess to bring peace and democracy and liberation to the world. The blood of the innocent is all in their hands and they're like vampires. They plot the death and the destruction of those whom they hate and despise. I'm telling you, make it to the hereafter. Make it to the hereafter. Trust Allah and don't be intimidated. I tell American people everywhere I go, Islam cannot be stopped. And I tell people everywhere I go, they ask me the question, should Islam dominate or democracy? I tell them real simple, and this is my last comment to you. This is part of submission. I tell them real simple, there's a verse in the Quran. Allah says it is He, Allah, who has sent His messenger with the guidance that it may dominate and knock out the brains of falsehood and that it may prevail even if the mushrikeens despise it. Democracy is not revelation and democracy does not equal freedom for in democracy you have apartheid, you have slavery, you have homosexuality, you have lesbianism, you have gambling, you have all of the vices that are against the spirit of truth. So no, we don't want to democratize Islam. We want to Islamize democracy. That's what we want. That's what we want. And they play games with the minds of young people today. They want to ask you, do you believe in the Prophet Muhammad? And he was married to a young girl named Aisha. And we start shaking. Did Prophet Muhammad marry a girl that young? Did he really do it? The same people ask you that. They marry men unto men and women unto women. You better wake up. You got the best message and the best example. You got to know that you are the lions of the jungle. Don't turn into a pussycat. May Allah bless you. Assalamu alaikum.